If there's one tool you need to know as a cybersecurity professional, it's Nmap. Nmap is the most widely used network scanner today due to its many capabilities and flexible options. In this video, I'll cover how to use Nmap to enumerate different computers on a network and show you how to use many of the important flags that come with Nmap so you can start scanning networks like a pro. Whether you're a security analyst looking to identify assets and services on your network, or a penetration tester looking for open ports to attack, Nmap has use cases for all teams in cybersecurity. I've created timestamps for different topics we'll be covering on Nmap, which are your basic Nmap scans and syntax, service enumeration, performance options, and avoiding detection. Without wasting any more time on the intro, let's get started. If we're looking to identify which assets in a certain IP range are online, we can run this basic Nmap scan to tell us. This Nmap command is going to scan every IP address from the 192.168.1.0 to 192.168.1.255 and tell us if it's reachable. If we're scanning the same subnet or LAN that our scanner is in, then the scanner will use a combination of ICMP echo or ping requests, ARP requests, and TCP SYN or ACK probes to common ports and look for a response. If the scanner gets a response, it will flag it as online, and we will see it as such in the output of our scan. The dash SN flag is going to disable port scanning, because at this time we're just trying to determine what IP addresses we can reach, and once we know which devices are online, we can then run port scans against those machines to see what services are running, but more on that later. Lastly, this dash O capital N flag is going to save the output of the scan to the scans directory as the file alive hosts in the default nmap format. We could replace this dash ON with dash OG for a grappable file, dash OX for an XML file, or dash OA to save the output to all three files. So let's run this scan on this 192.168.1 subnet, which my scanner is in, and see which systems are alive on this subnet. All right, that scan is finished, and based on the results, we see that 192.168.1.1 is up, which is our router. And then we also have a virtual machine on 192.168.1.105, and then 192.168.1.101 is my IP address. I've just booted up another virtual machine on the same subnet, so let's run the scan again and see if it picks it up. Now this time after running the scan, we see we have the same three IP addresses and also this new IP address of 192.168.1.103, which is the virtual machine that we just turned on. You may have noticed in the example scan that we're using pseudo privileges. Pseudo privileges are not a requirement, but they are necessary if we want to be a little more stealthy and run a faster scan. This is because Nmap ran with pseudo privileges by default is going to perform a SYN scan instead of a full TCP scan. Basically what this means is when the scanner is making requests to the ports on the target, the scanner will send a packet with the SYN flag set. If the target responds with a SYN ACK packet, we know that the port or host is online, and we can send a reset packet to avoid completing the TCP handshake. This is considered stealthier than completing the full TCP handshake on every port that we scan, and a little faster since we aren't waiting to close the full TCP connection on every port, but it should be known that modern firewalls and intrusion detection systems can detect SYN scans. So as you can see, with pseudo privileges and the SYN scan enabled, our scan took around 1.84 seconds to scan every single IP address in this range. And if we run the same scan without pseudo privileges, we see this time it took slightly longer, taking 2.09 seconds. This may not seem like much of a difference right now, but once we start scanning every single port of a system, then the scan time is really going to add up. Performing SYN scans requires elevated privileges. If we do not run Nmap with pseudo privileges, Nmap will default to running a full TCP scan. We can manually set what type of TCP scan we want to run by specifying certain flags. The dash S capital S flag will run a SYN scan, and the dash S capital T flag will run a full TCP scan. There's also the option to run an ACK scan, which will use the dash S capital A flag, and we'll talk about that a little more later on in the video. And real quickly before jumping into port scanning, a couple more useful flags to know are the dash capital P N flag, which will disable ICMP echo or ping requests as a discovery method. So if pings are filtered or blocked in your current environment, this would be a helpful flag to know. And the dash N flag will disable DNS resolution. By default, Nmap attempts to resolve IP addresses to host names using reverse DNS lookups. So the dash N flag tells Nmap not to perform these lookups, making the scans a little bit faster. Now that we've discovered some devices that are online, let's pick one and find out what ports are open on it. So for example, to scan the 192.168.1.103 IP address for all open TCP ports, we can run the following scan which is sudo nmap dash p dash 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 min dash rate 10,000. And then we're going to save the output of the scans to scans nmap all TCP. And then at the very end, we specified the IP address that we're scanning. The dash p dash flag is going to scan every one of those 65,535 TCP ports against the device. If we do not specify the dash p flag, we would then scan the top 1,000 most common ports, which are not the first 1,000 ports. If we want to specify specific ports to scan, we can do dash P and then the ports we want to scan separated by commas. For example, if you only wanted to scan port 22, port 80, port 443, and port 445, 
We could do this to scan just those four ports. And we can also use a dash in between ports to specify a range of ports that we want to scan. So for example, if we wanted to scan ports 1 through 100, we could do dash P 1 dash 100. For now, let's scan every single TCP port against 192.168.1.103 to see what's open. And as you can see, we quickly found many TCP ports that are open on this 192.168.1.103 server, which, spoiler alert, is an instance of Metasploitable 2. The min-rate flag is going to set the number of packets that we'll be sending simultaneously, so setting the minimum rate to 10,000 will go through all of the ports very quickly. But it will also be very noisy, which means if we were trying to be stealthy, this would quickly give us away. Setting a lower min rate will help us stay unnoticed and appear more like regular network traffic, but it will also make the scans take much longer. More often we are going to be scanning for TCP ports when we are looking to attack or defend a device, but UDP ports should also not be ruled out. To scan all UDP ports, we can run the same scan, except this time specify the dash S capital U flag, which will tell the scanner to only scan UDP ports. Now that we have a device and we know what ports are open on it, we can take our scans a step further and determine the services and possibly the versions of those services that are running on each port. To do this, we can first run a service enumeration scan by using the following. Here we're specifying what ports we want to scan and figure out what services are running on each one of them, and the dash SV argument is what is going to look for services running on each port, and potentially even their versions. It does this through various methods such as banner grabbing and probing for specific responses called signatures. After running that scan, now we see a version tab, which gives us a little more information about the software and version of the software that's running on each port. For example, the FTP port 21 is running VSFTPT 2.3.4. The SSH port is running OpenSSH 4.7 P1. On port 80, we have an Apache HTTP 2.2.8 server. On port 3306, we have a version of MySQL running, which is 5.0.51a. And on port 5432, we have PostgreSQL running version 8.3.0 through 8.3.7. If we want to know the operating system of the target and we can't figure it out based on the services that are running, we can use the dash capital O argument to run an OS detection scan. Nmap will fingerprint the server by sending it specialized requests and look for patterns in the responses to determine which operating system is running. These are not always completely accurate, and the output will even give you a confidence level on how accurate they think the output of the detected OS is. So let's run this operating system scan against our Metasploitable 2 server and see what it comes back as. After the scan completes, we see that Nmap has detected a general purpose Linux operating system running. Specifically, we're most likely dealing with Linux 2.6.9 through 2.6.33. Now let's run the same scan on a different IP address in my network, 192.168.1.105, which is a Windows 10 workstation. This time the scan is a little less confident, as we can see it's just guessing that it is a Microsoft Windows 10, 11, or 2019 server. And we also have this line here of aggressive OS guesses, and it's most confident that it is either Windows 10 1803 or Windows 10 1903 through 21H1. Lastly, in the service enumeration category, but definitely the most interesting, is the ability to run Nmap scripts against a target to gather certain information based on discovered ports and or services that are running. I like to start by using the dash S capital C flag, which will run the default Nmap scripts against the target and the identified ports, but Nmap scripting goes a whole lot deeper. Nmap scripts are broken down into different categories, and I'll put up a list of the categories on the screen now and a description of the kind of scripts that belong to each category. Some notable Nmap scripting categories are the Discovery category, which evaluates the accessible services, the Exploit category, which attempts to exploit known vulnerabilities against the scanned ports, the Malware category, which checks for malware that's infecting the target system, and the Vuln category, which looks for specific vulnerabilities on the system, depending on which ports are scanned. So here's what the output of running the default scripts looks like. For port 21, which is FTP, we see an FTP server status. We see that anonymous login is allowed on the FTP port. And there is a writable file that is accessible by an, the anonymous login user as well. On port 22, we see the SSH host keys. For port 25, which is SMTP, we see the different TLS ciphers that are accepted, as well as the different commands you can run against the SMTP server. On port 80, we see that the web server has a title of Metasploitable 2 Linux, and port 8180 is running an Apache Tomcat 5.5 server. If we wanted to run all of the scripts that belong to a specific category, let's say for example the Vulm category, then we would use dash dash script and then the category to run every single script in that category against the server. So this scan here is going to run every single vulnerability script that is applicable to the 192.168.1.103 server. And if there were specific scripts in a category that we wanted to run but not the entire category itself, we can specify the full script name instead of just the category to run just those specific scripts. And if we wanted to run multiple scripts, we could separate them with commas. If you don't know what any of the scripts are, you can list them out by running nmap-script-help and then the category of the scripts you want to run. 
And this will give you a long list of all of the different scripts that are in the Vuln category. That way you could run against our server. We could also just go to the default directory where all of the scripts are placed, which is user share and map scripts. So let's list out this directory. And here we can see the many and map scripts that exist that we can run against our targets. With all that said, when I'm doing a capture the flag and I've discovered open ports that are running on a box, I like to run this scan here, which I call the God scan, to determine the services and their versions that are running on the machine, as well as get any information from the default and map scripts that may come in handy. Now that we've covered all of the main identification and enumeration flags, let's talk about the settings that we can adjust to change the performance of our scan. The first flag we can change is the max retries option, which will set the number of retries that the scan will attempt to request to a port before determining that it is offline. The default for this setting is 10, which took our scan 0.51 seconds to complete. And if we were to set this to five, we see that it took just about half the time in 0.23 seconds. And it looks like the same number of ports were discovered as open. The next flag is the stats every flag, which will give us updates on the scan that is running depending on the time that we give it. So for example, if we set the flag stats every equals five seconds, we would get a status update every five seconds on what the scan is doing. So here we see every five seconds, it's telling us how much of the scan has been completed and the estimated time left on the scan. Next up is a common flag amongst many different tools, which is the dash V or verbose flag. This is going to give us more detailed output as the scan is running. And for the most detailed output, we can use the dash VV or very verbose flag. So here we see with just the dash V flag set, we have some more information about each time it discovers an open port while the scan is running. And in this instance, the dash VV or very verbose flag is going to do something similar. If we want to adjust how long the scanner will initially wait for a response from a probe, we can set the initial RTT timeout flag. So for example, if we set the flag to 50 MS, then the scanner would wait 50 milliseconds to receive a response from the target. RTT is the round trip time. If the NMAP scanner doesn't receive a response within those 50 milliseconds, then the scanner will dynamically increase the round trip time timeout to give the target more time to respond. This can have your scans end up taking a very long time if the max round trip time is too high and the scanner is waiting a long time to never hear back from closed ports. So to adjust the maximum wait time, we can set the max RTT timeout time so that the dynamic increases by the scanner won't exceed the amount of time that we set here. So if we only want our scanner to wait for a maximum of 100 milliseconds per request, we could set the max RTT timeout time to 100 MS. I briefly mentioned this earlier in the video, but if you wanna set the number of packets that will be sent simultaneously, we can adjust this with the min dash rate flag. So if we were to scan our Windows host with a min rate of 300, we see it took us 5.52 seconds to complete, but if we were to raise that min rate to 10,000, we see this time it took only 0.59 seconds to complete. And then lastly, if we were to lower it to 20 simultaneous packets, it this time took the scanner 12.63 seconds to complete. So these settings can really make a difference depending on the scope of the scan. The last flag that I'll mention for the performance options section that will also tie a little bit into the next section is the timing template or dash T flag. We can set the dash capital T flag to a number zero through five, which is going to slow down or speed up the scan depending on the number that we give it. Each number also has a name associated with it and a general use case, which I will throw up on the screen and summarize now. The dash T zero option is called the paranoid option. It is going to slow down your scan to just one probe at a time with long delays in between each probe. This is going to take your scan a very long time to complete and is really only going to be used by threat actors who have months to carry out their attack. You will most likely not be using this during a penetration test or network assessment unless you were tasked with simulating something like an advanced persistent threat. The dash T1 option or sneaky option is slightly faster than the dash T0 option and is what you will most likely be using if you're attempting to remain stealthy during a penetration test. The dash T2 is the polite option and is the best option if you're scanning fragile systems or production systems during a penetration test or network assessment. The dash T3 option is the default option, and this is what is used if you don't specify any timing template in a normal scan. The dash T4 flag will scan a little bit faster than the default and is called the aggressive scan template. This should really only be used for local area networks and stable networks with short response times. Lastly, the dash T5 option is called the insane scan template. It is going to scan the network extremely fast with a higher likelihood of missing things. I wouldn't really recommend going over dash T4 if you're on the same network due to the higher potential of dash T5 to miss true positives like ports that are actually open. Let's quickly compare the scan times of each timing template while just scanning three ports on my Metasploitable 2 server. All right, I'm going to stop the dash T0 or paranoid option because it still hasn't completed scanning three ports after 10 minutes. My lock screen is even coming up. So over 10 minutes to scan just three ports is ridiculously slow 
So I do not recommend using the dash T0 option during a penetration test unless you absolutely have to. For example, if you have to mimic an advanced persistent threat. Now let's try the dash T1 or sneaky option against the same three ports. This time we're going to use the stats every equals five seconds flag so that we get an update every five seconds on how close the scan is to complete. So it looks like the T1 or sneaky scan was able to discover those three ports in just over one minute, which is significantly faster than T0 because after 10 minutes, we still haven't had the scan complete. So let's see how this one minute scan compares to going up one tier to the polite option or T2. So it looks like dash T2 was an even more significant jump from 60 seconds to just under two seconds. Now we have dash T3 or the default time template, which completes in 0.26 seconds. Now let's try dash T4. And this one completed in 0.18 seconds. And then dash T5 or the insane option completes in around the same time as dash T4. And once again, these scan times would be more significant depending on the scope of the scan. The larger the scope, the more of a difference you'll see. Now that we've covered the majority of Nmap's most useful flags, let's talk about some of the best flags we can use to evade detection. Piggybacking off of what we were saying about the timing templates, you're going to want to run your scan with the time template of at least dash T1 to decrease the chance of your scan being detected by an intrusion detection system or another piece of equipment. Next, to potentially aid in evading getting blocked by firewalls, Nmap's TCP X scan, or the dash S capital A method, is much harder to filter for firewalls and IDS slash IPS systems than regular SYN scans or full connect scans. TCP X scans will only send a TCP packet with the ACK flag set, and packets with the ACK flag set are often passed through the firewall because the firewall cannot determine whether the connection was first established from the external network or the internal network. So when doing an ACK scan, we want to look for the RCVD packets or receive packets in the output. Open ports scanned with the dash SA argument may respond with reset flags, and ports that are scanned that do not receive anything back are likely being dropped by a firewall. Several virtual private servers or VPSs with different IP addresses are recommended when doing NMAP scans for a penetration test when you're outside of the network. That way, if one of your servers gets caught scanning and is blocked, you have others to rely on to continue scanning. We can also use Nmap's decoy feature to send packets with randomly generated IP addresses in the IP header to disguise the origin of the packets being sent. Our real IP address will be one of these packets being sent. So for example, we could use the dash capital D RND colon five to generate five packets with random IP addresses and one packet with our real IP address for each packet that we want to send to the server. It's worth noting that the decoy IP addresses should be alive in order to not set off any SYN flooding security controls. Lastly, we can also set a source port to scan from instead of Nmap choosing one at random by using the flag dash dash source dash port. If the firewall rules of the organization where pen testing are not set up properly, they may allow traffic from TCP port 53 because this is the default port for DNS. So if we set our source port to be 53, we may be able to bypass firewall or IDS filters. That's it for this video on Nmap. If you enjoyed or found this video useful, please leave a like because it helps the channel out a lot and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. If you want to talk about cybersecurity, feel free to leave a comment or join my Discord to reach me and the rest of my community. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.